But we do have visitors, and so we're glad that you're with us, and we extend a warm welcome to you. We hope you enjoy yourself, and the Lord blesses you. We're going to begin by reading a couple of verses from Isaiah 26. Verses 3 and 4 says, Thou wilt keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll ask Danny to come and lead us in our first song. Father, we come before you today, and we thank you <clears throat> that those circumstances here may change, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Father, that we can gather on this Sunday morning, that we can spend time singing your praises, spend time, Father, being uh, instructed from the Word of God, and we do pray that you may meet with us. Though our numbers may be few today, I pray that you would meet with us, that you would have your will and way in our hearts, and that you would be honored and glorified by all that is said and done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Danny. Good morning. The sun is bright and it is warm. If I was up troubled so early and I thought, oh, that's really hot on my back. And that was the sun. That's great. God is good. Amen. Okay, let's stand and sing. <clears throat> I will enter his gates and God will make a way.
uh, note from Michaela and Richard Braun that I would like to read before we get into our announcements this morning. Uh, they write, Dear Church Family, we'd like to take a moment to express our deepest thanks and gratitude to all of you. As we walk through this difficult season of uncertainty and non-ideal circumstances, we receive many words of encouragement, thoughts, and prayers. We will forever be grateful for our wonderful church family and the endless love and support you provide us at all times. We're excited to have welcomed our sweet daughter into this world on November the 17th, and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you again, Richard and Michaela Braun. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, they've included, we always thank God for you all and continually mention you in our prayers. And I believe that uh, we have a little picture of Arlen Veronica and uh, five pounds and seven ounces. So my understanding is that Richard and Michaela are home, uh, that the baby is still in the hospital because she is a bit of a preemie. So we praise the Lord for answered prayer. Amen. Amen. So that's exciting to, uh, to hear. All right, Kevin, let's get right into our evening, or our, our announcements. Our evening service for the end of the month is not, it's being canceled for this month, and so we uh, encourage you to keep that in mind, and we'll pick that up uh, next month as we come to the end of the year. Wednesday evenings, uh, our study in Romans 12 continues, a study in practical Christianity, and we encourage you to come and be a part of that Bible study uh, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Operation Christmas Child, we had 62 boxes that were delivered uh, to Samaritan's Purse this week, and so we thank you for those that participated and uh, took some boxes and filled them for these young people around the world. Our Overcomers meets tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> for, your, for your visitors, please come back and visit us next week for them. Things will be a little bit more normal. Uh, but Larry and Sharon Hart are going to be with us. They're our special music and our speakers, and so we're looking forward to that. They are with South Niagara Life Ministries, and uh, you come tomorrow morning at 11 and be blessed. The Christmas banquet is coming up Friday evening at 6.30 here at the church. And so the sign-up sheet is in the hallway. Now, for all of you who are last-minute people, this is the last minute. All right? Uh, Brian needs to know a count before uh, we get too far into this week. So we would encourage you before you leave, if you've not yet signed up for the banquet, that you do that. And uh, plan on coming Friday evening. We have Pastor Al Theory from Bethel Baptist Church in Simcoe he is going to be our guest preacher, and uh, he may even sing a song or two. So looking forward to a great time Friday night. Uh, there is a different sort of baby shower taking place next Sunday. Right after the morning service, we're going to gather in the Iwana activity room, and I am told that this is open to the entire church family, not just ladies. And uh, we're going to uh, bless Danielle and Michael Dewitt uh, on the upcoming birth of their baby girl. And uh, we would encourage you to bring something that day. We really want to bless these young families. And so we would encourage you to be a part of that. Make sure you come prepared next week. And uh, it's not a long time after the service. You just pop in and drop off your gift and give a word of greeting to the couple. And uh, we're looking forward to blessing them as they look forward to the birth of their daughter. Uh, we are, uh, for our Iwana Christmas store, we are accepting monetary donations. And uh, rather than, than gifts and, and uh, different sort of packages that many times people do donate, we're asking if you could to uh, donate monetarily, and uh, we will use those funds to gather the necessary items for our Christmas store. All right, Danny, if you would come. We're going to continue singing. I just want to ask you a question, Pastor. Is there, is there any um, place to drop off your 
uh, Christmas boxes are that they're all over. We can't do anything. Or, you know, we can drop them in the office, and we'll try and get them to you. Because we're old people, and uh, we're a week late. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot longer to. It's understandable. <laughs> So if anybody else has got a, a box that they need to bring in or leave in or drop, drop it off at the office and they'll take care of it for us. Hey, let's stand and sing Victory in Jesus. <laughs> something and it's um, very touching but uh, everybody goes through struggles and um, this is just so you know that God is there. Oh, 
even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters to stand as an heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with the light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths, and brought streams also out of the rock, and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God, and they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock, that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Father, I pray this morning as we come to the word of God that you may indeed still our hearts. This is, uh, by all definitions, a very different Sunday than normal. But Father, we thank you for those who have been able to make the trip, those who are here. And Father, I pray that you may indeed bless them for the effort that they've put in and that our time together may be sweet, and that, Lord, your word may challenge us and encourage us this morning. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Many of you have heard the story of a gentleman that was out hiking one day, and uh, he uh, got a little bit too close to the edge of the cliff. And he, his foot slipped, and he began to fall down the edge of the mountain. And as he was falling, he reached and he grabbed a branch that was sticking out of the side of the hill. And uh, as he hung there, hanging on to that branch, he looked down and saw that he still had about a thousand feet to fall if that branch were to give way. And so he began to yell and call for help. And he called and he called and he called and nobody answered until finally there was a voice that said, I'm here for you. And he said, who, who are you? And the voice said, I am the Lord. I'm here for you. I need you to let go of the branch. And the gentleman said, what? And the voice said, I need you to let go of the branch. And the gentleman said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like us. We sometimes have trouble trusting God. We sometimes have trouble letting go and letting God do what he desires to do in our lives. We are a people, all of us, that are very much the same as Israel was in Psalm 78. Psalm 78 is a basically a history or a review of Israel's history. It goes through and talks about many of the things that God did. And as it begins, it says that, that these words are to be given to your children and your children's children. Uh, in verse 6, it says that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. The purpose of us talking about the things of God with our children and in church is that I, we may be reminded that we serve a great God. 
that we might know in our heart of hearts that God is still on the throne and he is still busy doing the things that he does. He is sovereign. And in his providential care for us, he meets needs oftentimes that we're not even aware that we have. And that's exactly what was taking place in the history of Israel. The people were delivered from Egypt, they were delivered from bondage, and they began to wander through the wilderness, and they came to the Red Sea. And God parted the waters of the Red Sea. He led them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and he did one thing after another miraculously for them. But yet, as we come to this passage, verse 18 says, and they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? And so we want to ask that question this morning. Can God? Can God meet my needs? Can God answer my prayers? Can God do those things that we, by human limitations would deem to be impossible? Can God look after me in the midst of all of the problems of life? Can God heal cancer? Can God raise up a generation that will come after us and will serve him and continue to proclaim his blessed name? And I believe that unequivocally the answer to all of those questions is a resounding yes that God can. If you think of your life this morning and you think of the things in your life that maybe have you a little bit befuddled, maybe there's some things that you're facing that are causing you a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of uncertainty as to what the future holds. And you are tempted oftentimes, and you are not alone in this, by the way, but you're tempted oftentimes to ask that question, can God meet my needs? Can God come through for me in this time? Can God answer my prayers? And I believe that as we go through this passage this morning that we will see very clearly that he can. We are a lot like Israel. You know, uh, I find myself many times as I read the Old Testament and I see Israel and I see their sin and their doubting and their rebellion against God, I often look down my nose at Israel and say, what were you thinking? How could you possibly be that way? With everything that you had seen, with everything that God had done, you still doubted him. And then I take a closer look inward. And I find that I'm not a lot different than Israel. I'm exactly made up of the same things that they are. And I have a tendency many times when the going gets tough and the, the future is uncertain, I have the tendency to begin to question and begin to doubt God's ability. Notice with me three things this morning. First of all, I want you to notice the condition of the people. Look at verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock, and the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? And then down in verse 41, a little bit further on in the chapter, it says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now we know as we look at the character of God that God is omnipotent, that he's all-powerful. We know that he is omniscient, he is all-knowing. We know that he is omnipresent, that he is everywhere at once, all at the same time. But do you realize that you and I, as minuscule, insignificant human beings, have the ability to limit God because of our unbelief, because of our doubting. Israel limited what God could or would do for them because they were a people who were faithless. Here was a people who called themselves by God's name. 
Here was a group of people who were the nation that God had chosen. They were his people. And here was a people that should have trusted God without reservation. But yet, they doubted God. Yet they seemed oblivious to the power of God in their midst. Isn't that kind of like us today? Isn't it that we are tempted and prone many times to question whether or not God will? You know, if you are uncertain about the answer to that question, then think of those things which are difficult for us to even think about. Let's, let's think for a minute of a building project here at Golden Harvest. Let's think of building a new building. Many of us would say that we can't do it, humanly speaking. Right? We don't have enough money in the bank. We have a building fund and we have, we have some money in there, but we don't have three or four million dollars to begin building. Now, I was, when before COVID hit, it was going to be about $3 million. So now we're talking 5 or $6 million. We don't have it. Can God provide? Yes, he can. One of the questions uh, last Sunday for Pastor Ryan was about housing. And uh, he has been very clear that that is the one thing that is causing him some concern. Coming from Nova Scotia to Ontario with the housing price difference, uh, it is uh, a little bit of uncertainty there of how he can afford a house here in Ontario. The question is, can God? Can God provide? Absolutely he can. And we know that here. But here, we start thinking logically. Here, we start thinking with all of the dynamics of the modern world in which we live. And we start thinking and we begin to question, how is it possible? How can God work and do anything that we need done in this moment? Let me ask you this. How many of you have ever seen an answer to prayer in your life? Pretty much all of us. We've all had an answer to prayer somehow, in some fashion. That is because God is God. That is because God is able to do all things. That is because he is intimately aware with, of the needs in our lives. And he is oftentimes answering prayer before we have even begun to utter our prayer. So if we look back on answered prayer, and then we look at the future with all of the uncertainty that is attached to it, how is it that we begin to doubt and question as we look to the future? But as we look backward and we see the hand of God, and we see the faithfulness of God, that those lessons do not somehow translate into our hearts and minds in this present day. Amen. Amen. The condition of the people was no different than you and I. They were a people that struggled with trusting God. Instead of trusting God and living by faith, we often worry and fret. But it doesn't have to be that way. I want to tell you that we have a God that does not change. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is God. But yet we ask the question that Israel asked. Can God do this? Can God meet this need? I think we need to resolve this morning to be as Jesus challenged Thomas to be. To not be faithless but believing. We forget so often. And as we read Psalm 78, we see Israel has forgotten all the things that God had done for them. 
Now think about it from a 21st century perspective this morning. The nation of Israel was led by God himself as a pillar of cloud by day. A pillar of fire by night. That pillar of fire stood between Israel and the armies of Egypt as Pharaoh changed his mind and came after them. And that pillar of fire stood between Israel and Egypt while the Red Sea opened up and Israel began to cross over on dry ground. All of these people had witnessed firsthand the incredible, miraculous power of God. They had seen everything that he had done. They had seen all the plagues of Egypt. They had seen all the miracles that God had performed in the wilderness in protecting them. And yet this is the same people. In verse 18, where it says, And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, verse 19, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? It doesn't seem to make sense, does it? I mean, really, when you think it through, it doesn't seem to make sense that you can witness all of that and then begin just a short time later to question God's ability. They had seen the waters at Mara made pure. They had seen their enemies put on the run. God had proven himself powerful time and time and time again. But yet Israel was forgetful of his mighty power that they had witnessed in their lives, and they doubted God. But I'm made of the same stuff that they are. I'm made of the same dust. I am the same type of person. And all of us, for that matter, are. We may sit here looking spiritual. But sometimes when the circumstances are perfect and everything comes together, we begin to question. We begin to question God's care for us. We begin to question God's love for us. We begin to question God's ability to meet our needs in those moments. How many times has God come through for you? How many times has he moved mountains or parted the waters in your life? How many times has he lifted the veil of affliction or suffering in your life and allowed the light of his glory and his peace and his mercy just to flood over your soul? How many times has he met the need or done the impossible, proven himself to be God to you? How many times have we forgotten all that he did yesterday in the problems of today? My friends, we need to take a look back this morning and remember what God has done for us. Amen. Remember his faithfulness. Remember his goodness. Remember his mercy. Remember what he has done in our lives. Amen. In the salvation that he has offered us so freely. In the answers to prayer that all of us have experienced. In his providence in our lives. How he has watched over us and cared for us and protected us in so many ways. On September the 11th, 2001, the United States was attacked by terrorists in New York City and uh, in Washington, and uh, another jet was, was forced down by the passengers. But if you've read anything about September the 11th, 2001, you may have read stories of people who were for one reason or another delayed in getting to the Twin Towers that day. Stories told of one gentleman that stopped to buy donuts for his office. And because of that one act, he wasn't in the building when the planes hit. Another gentleman got stuck in traffic at a detour and was delayed. And he called into the office and said that he'd be late because of traffic and he never arrived. And he was spared. That's the hand of God. You know, many times, and I've been 
fairly open and honest about my struggles on the Queen Elizabeth Way. Uh, and trying to hold on to my sanctification as I have these people cut me off. But I've got to tell you that there have been times in my life when I've gotten stressed and worked up because something wasn't going the way it should and I was going to be late for a meeting, I was going to be late for some function that I was supposed to be at. And none of us in those circumstances have any clue of what God is protecting us from. Of what may have happened if we had been on time. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe, maybe things would have been just fine. But also, there is a possibility that God, in his sovereignty, is protecting us. If God did what he did for Israel, as we read through the Old Testament, we read through their history, if God did what he did for Israel, is he any different today? It, no. No, he's not. He is just as powerful today. He is over the affairs of men as he has always been. He has not changed one iota. But yet, we doubt his ability. Israel was foolish in questioning God. By questioning God in verse 19 and saying, Can God, they proved their ignorance of his power and his person. But yet the same scene is played out time and time again throughout history. Not just with Israel, but with his church through the centuries. When the spies went into Canaan. Remember the story of the 12 spies and, and two came back and said, let's do it. God, is, it's, God has given us the land. God has given us such a wonderful inheritance. The 10 of them came back and said, oh, there's giants in the land and, and it's impossible and we can't do this and we can't, they're right, they can't do it, but God can. And my friends, when you begin to question God's ability and wonder whether he is with you and wonder whether or not he is going to come through and wonder whether or not he's going to answer your prayers and come through for you, remember this fact that God is the one that has to do it, not you. It is him and not me. I cannot do anything outside of him. We are guilty many times of the same foolish things that Israel had done. Some problem arises in our lives or in the church, whatever it may be, and the first thing we say is, can God deal with this? Can God do this? That is doubt. So the condition of the people was a little bit faithful. It was a little bit doubting. But I want us to see at the same time the character of their God and our God. Look at verses 5 through 7. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You know why God has given us his word? You know why God has recorded for us all that he has done in the history of mankind, from Genesis 1-1 right through to this moment in history? It is that we might set our hope in God. Just as the purpose of the law and the commandments that were given to Israel, that their children might set their hope in God, it is the same for us. God has recorded all that he has done for us, that we might hope in him, that we might not be disturbed by the, the circumstances of this life. 
that we might not be consumed with everything that's going on around us, but that we might keep our focus and our gaze on the one who holds tomorrow. And that we might have faith that he is on top of everything. Amen. He's not forgotten about us. He's not dozed off. He is not busy doing other things. He knows exactly what each and every one of us are facing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So his word is given to us that we might set our hope in God. God has not changed. He is still a God who keeps his word. Everything that he has promised, he will do. God is still God. He has performed through history. He has performed not only for Israel, but for his church. And he has promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Time and time again, God has demonstrated his power in the midst of his people. Through the days of Paul, through the days of John, through the days of the early church fathers, through the days of this church, yeah. God has shown his power Amen. and has been faithful. Aren't you glad that God is patient? Amen. Amen. I tell you what, when I look at my life, and I look at those times when I question God, and when I go my own way, and I do my own thing, and I snub my nose, as it were, in the face of a holy God, I'm grateful for his patience. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful for his mercy. That he loves me. As difficult as I am sometimes, he has demonstrated that patience with every one of us. And he is faithful. And he is holy. I heard a pastor once say this, and I wrote it in the front flyleaf of my Bible. He said, God will work when he pleases. And how he pleases. And through what instruments he pleases. And if he pleases. That is his prerogative because he is God. We sometimes get the whole picture turned around backwards. That we're the center of the universe and everything revolves around us. And we're the ones that are the most important. And God has to work on my behalf. But he is God. And he will work when, how, and if he pleases. We've seen his character time and time again throughout the scriptures. So not only do we see the condition of the people and the character of our God, but we see thirdly the challenge for today. Verses 6 through 8. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. When we look at Israel's history, and the way that God proved himself to them. And then we consider how he has proven himself in our own lives. The question, can God, is very clearly answered. Yes, he can. Whatever it is you're facing this morning, no matter how insurmountable it seems, God can. We, as his people, must have confidence in God. When the world brings its hands in despair and doubt and questions whether God is there or whether he loves them or whether he is even existing, we can say he is. And he does care. When the world 
looks at declining morality and escalating violence and economic trouble and the decrease in the popularity of the church and the increase of evil and the world asks, can God? Then we as his people must be ready with the answer. Yes, we can. This has always been the way it was throughout the entire Bible and still is today. If you read the stories in the Bible, if you read the story of Daniel in the lion's den, from a human perspective, that was absolutely 100% impossible. But yet, God came through. Amen. Some may say, well, the lions had some sort of condition and, and they just weren't up to eating that day. A little bit of stomach upset. But if you read Daniel and you read that story, when Daniel stepped out of the lion's den, those who had accused him were thrown in. And the lions were at them before they ever hit the ground. What we see in that story is the hand of God. I wonder if you look back over your life, can you see the hand of God in your life? Do you see how God moved and protected you and, and steered you away from silly mistakes that you may have made. God is God. In this day, in 2022, with all of the craziness that accompanies these days, God is still God. God is able to come through for you. He has and he will. Let the past be your reminder and learn to trust him no matter what. So what should we do in the, in the meantime while we're waiting for God to work and act? What should we do? Because that is really the question of the hour. Well, I'm waiting for God to come through, and I'm waiting for God to answer prayer, and I'm waiting for him to meet my needs. What should I be doing? I think it's very simple. We obey his commandments. We keep our focus on him, and we keep pressing on. We keep following after God. You know, when I trusted Christ, as a 15-year-old kid, I did not know a lot of theology. I didn't know anything about doctrine. I didn't know anything about the miracle of salvation. All I knew is that Jesus loved me and died for me and that I was a sinner and I needed saving. And I knew in that moment when I cried out to God that God had done something in my heart. We don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to know everything there is to know in this Bible. That's right. I don't. Everybody comes to me because I'm the pastor. Pastor, I got a question. I got a lot of questions. I'm not sure I can answer yours. But I know this. That God is God. Amen. And that he can do all things. Even those things in my mind, in my heart, that I have deemed to be impossible, God can do. Amen. God can come through and work on our behalf. Amen. And can still perform miracles. Many of you may have uh, flown on a uh, passenger jet. I've been on many over the course of my lifetime, and I, I always find a little bit different when you have to walk across the tarmac and climb the stairs into the airplane instead of walking through that little taxiway thing that, that stretches out to the side of the plane. When you're walking across that parking lot or that tarmac, you are subject to the laws of gravity. When you begin to climb those stairs, 
using your energy and your muscle power, you are still subject to the law of gravity. You enter that jet and you find your seat and you sit down and you just relax. Invariably, there are people on that plane that are not as comfortable in you as you are. They're a little bit more anxious, a little bit more fearful. But that force of gravity from which I had climbed into the plane, as that plane taxis down the runway, that force of gravity is still trying to keep it on the ground. But there becomes another law that comes into the equation, and that's the law of aerodynamics. When I am in that plane, I have committed myself to that jet. I rose as that jet rose off the runway. The triumph of that jet was my triumph. Its speed was my speed. All of its possibilities were mine because I was inside. And it is the same with the law of Christ and the spirit of Christ. I don't need to understand everything. All I need to do is be in him. And I experience all that comes through that relationship. Amen. His grace and his mercy work in my life. He does the things that I cannot do. He empowers me to live the Christian life. He fills me with his spirit. He listens to my prayers. He works on my behalf. All the things that I cannot do, but yet because I am in him, I am enjoying the benefit of it. So my answer to the question this morning, can God, is very clearly, yes, he can. Whatever it is you're facing in your life, Whatever problem, whatever heartache, whatever difficulty you are facing, God has this. And God can work on your behalf. The question is, do we believe it up here? Do we? God is able. God is God. And as long as I trust him, he can and will work. Father, we thank you for this morning's hour. Lord, this has been a bit of a different day. But Lord, I believe that you are still able to work. Father, I pray that you would help us. Help us to learn from the mistakes of Israel. Help us to learn from the mistakes that we have made. And help us, Father, to trust God at every turn and juncture of our lives. Help us to rest in your ability, in your holiness, in your sovereignty. God, forgive us for those times when we doubt and we question. Help us to be a people who walk in faith, nothing waver. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing in closing. Amazing grace.
all the time. God is good. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. I know that for many of you, it meant an early morning of digging out the driveway and uh, having choice words for those snowplow operators. But I'm glad you're here. And I trust that God has encouraged you and blessed you for the effort that you've put in. And uh, that you'll have a great week. And remember that God can, whatever it is. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for each one that's been able to come this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you may help us to be a people who trust you. A people who have faith, even in the midst of insurmountable circumstances. To remember that you are God. We thank you and praise you for who you are. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.